Hello, and welcome to this next basic programming prologue video. <laughs> I, I should really settle on some way to introduce these <laughs> vlogs. Um, but uh, anyways, we're going to talk about loops today. Um, I think, I hope this will be a quick one. Uh, loops are pretty simple. Um, and um, easy to use. So uh, let's get to it. So uh, let's get rid of what we had from the last video. And uh, so what does a loop do? It goes through things again and again and again. Um, there are a few different types of loops. I think the most basic loop uh, is the while loop. And a while loop looks like this. As you know, we have this uh, these parentheses. So essentially, uh, you'll put in some boolean value, and um, it will do this loop as long as the value is true. So let's say we have a variable called um, uh, uh, let's say loop count. Right, and we'll call it. We'll make it an integer, and we'll set it to zero to start with. Okay, and then in here, um, we'll put the condition when we want it to stop, which will be uh, loop count uh, is um, so. When this is true, it'll run it. So once it becomes false, it'll stop. So let's say we want to count 10 times. So we say less than uh, 10. So once it becomes 10, it will, it will stop. So what we'll do is we'll trace. Let's trace. Um, we have looped. Oops. We have looped and you can use a plus sign to add strings together which is very handy so <laughs> keep that in mind uh, and then we'll put loop count times like that and be sure to have your spaces in there too because this number will just it'll just come out it won't have any spaces or formatting on it. And then after we've looped it, um, see right now it'll loop forever because loop will be zero, it'll trace that, and nothing will happen. So what will we do? Let's, uh, um, we'll do this, loop count plus plus. And did we talk about plus plus? I think we, we did plus equals in previous uh, <laughs> uh, tutorials, but essentially plus plus will add one to whatever uh, variable it is. And there's also a minus minus that does the opposite, but uh, we'll do plus plus like this. So, um, so what this will do is it'll look, it'll check for this to see if it's true. If it is true, it'll run it and then go. So. If I run this, I'll hit F5. That's a button I'm pushing to do this. Or if you aren't in full screen, you can hit the play button. And look at that. Zero times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. So, um, yeah. That's the most simple loop. The, the while loop. Um, a slightly different version of this is called the do while loop. So basically the way this works is instead of starting with while, we'll start with do. And do will do this and then we'll end with while and then we'll close it out with a semicolon. So this is just slightly different from what we uh, looked at before. So this time, instead of checking the conditional first, uh, it'll run the code first and then check it. So in this case, uh, we won't see much different um, or actually, I think we will. Maybe we won't... Yeah, see. Oh, no. Yeah, it won't be different this time. Um, because uh, uh, it is... Yeah. It's still going through ten times. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, that was different, wasn't it? 
<laughs> Let's go back and see. Oh, wait. So we had 0 through 9, right? Let's run it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, 0 through 9. Um, I think the only... I think maybe what will happen... How about if we put in equals 10 and we run it? Maybe we'll get... Okay. So, all right, see, we're getting this 10 this time, right? Because uh, on the the 10th time, it is equal to 10, so it'll go through. So I think if we swap this out, do, and then we run it, oh, we still get 10, so... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it's important if you uh, run the code first or check it first. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, we won't worry about that. So let's move on to the, the next thing I want to talk about. So actually, you can sort of set this up, you know, sort of manually, like how we had it before with this while loop. But there's actually a loop that's specially made to do this. So we don't have to make this variable. Um, and we don't have to use the while. What this is called is a for loop. And uh, in almost every language, there's some manner of for loop. Um, and the way this works is we'll put for and then uh, some parentheses, right? So instead of, before we declare the variable outside of it, but actually built into here, it will declare a variable for us. And uh, here's what it looks like. So for i in 0 dot 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 10, right? So it's making, it's declaring a variable called i uh, right here. And we can actually call this whatever we want. It could be like a loop count like we did before. But uh, just so that you'll kind of get an i for it, it's kind of tradition <laughs> to put i. I think it stands for iteration, but that's not really important. But usually if you see i like this, it'll be for uh, some manner of for loop. So what we'll do, so we have this i in 0 and then dot 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 10. So essentially, uh, i will come in, or not i will come in, but this i variable <laughs> will come in and as zero. And then while it's going through these uh, uh, numbers from zero to ten, it will uh, it'll run this code here. So instead of loop count, we change this to i. And if we run it, we should get a similar thing as we did before. So zero through nine. So it runs through it ten times. Um, because it does less than rather than uh, uh, less than or equal to. Okay, whoops, that's from the last episode. <laughs> okay, so um, that's our, our basic for loop. Um, so what are for loops useful for? I think when I do it, if there's, of course, repetitive tasks, say there's like a... Um, a I'm making a game and I want to set up 10 characters, 10 enemies at the same time. You can like uh, initialize them in a for loop and then 1 to 10. And actually, like, let's say we had this as like uh, max enemies. Oops, I should have. <laughs> That's how you spell enemies. You do var max enemies integer. And this 0 and 10 can be whatever we want. So let's say we have like 20 uh, max enemies, and we type that in here, max enemies, like that. And we run it. It will run 20 times, so 0 to 19, like that. So of course, that's one thing that we can do with this. But another thing that's sort of useful uh, with these loops is when working with arrays. So let's make an array. Um, let's say the enemy list. <laughs> A list of my enemies. Um, 
Oh, no, 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 sorry. I said it was an array, right? So this is of type array. And let's just put strings in there. Okay. And we'll just uh, initialize it with a literal. So let's say uh, evil is one of my enemies. I don't like it, evil things. Um, let's say hunger. I hate being hungry. Uh, death is bad, right? What else is uh, evil in the world? Whoops. Um, yeah, Hitler was a pretty bad guy, right? Um, uh, we'll leave it <laughs> at that. So here's a list of my enemies. Um, and we have for i in 0 through max enemies. But what we'll do is, so here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 enemies. We can plop a 4 here and then trace you know enemies and then remember you put the index number we'll put a i in there and i in there so if we uh, run this it will yeah list off the um, amount of enemies that we have but let's say for whatever reason uh, this is running automatically and there's some other part of the program that's adding new names to this list so we won't know how many um, names will be in this list right so there's two ways we can handle this one is instead of this four we can put enemies and then this array has a property called length this will automatically change depending on how many you know uh, these items are in this array so uh, if I put in uh, let's run it real quick and there we go we it displays all four of them so that means this number here um, is returns a four right so be sure not to get confused because remember each index this last one is index number three so the, the length will come back with the actual number of items in there but there's actually another thing we can do and I think once we start working with objects uh, this will be um, a bit uh, better so inside of here um, I don't think it really knows that these are strings right so Particularly once we get to objects, this might be a bit um, <clears throat> a bit more useful. So there's a slightly different version of um, for loop that we can run, and it goes like this: for uh, let's see, what was it? Oh, crud. <laughs> let's look it up real quick. <laughs> You know what? Cancel that. <laughs> uh, let's just stick to using the length for getting things out of an array. I, I think I was thinking of uh, C sharp. <laughs> um, uh, there's a for each loop that will pluck uh, different object types out of um, a uh, an, a list or a an array. So um, yeah, I think that's it for loops that we need to talk about. Um, so, yeah, that's all. See you next time. Uh, I think we're going to talk about functions a little bit more. And uh, it's a very important part of programming, so I think you'll, you'll like it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, see ya.